Megadeth is widely recognized as one of the most influential metal bands today. But for founder Dave Mustaine, it initially began as his instrument of vengeance against his former band, Metallica. Regarded as one of the big four of thrash alongside Metallica, Slayer, and Anthrax, Megadeth is arguably the most technical among them. Throughout its career, the band would undergo several lineup changes, experimentations with different styles, and even a brief breakup. But these didn't deter the group from continuously making an impact, with Mustaine leading the way for Megadeth to establish themselves as one of the most prolific thrash bands. So how did Megadeth rise from underground favorites to undisputed heavy metal titans? Keep watching as we follow Megadeth's story from their earliest days to their latest projects, and the controversies and changes that Mustaine and his band underwent along the way. Megadeth is known as one of the pioneers of thrash, responsible for perfecting and popularizing the genre and metal. Their aggressive yet complex style gained them a cult following in their early years, which eventually developed into a worldwide fan base. But while Megadeth achieved every rock star's dream, their story began with a nightmare. The sudden ejection of Dave Mustaine from what would eventually become the biggest metal band in the world, Metallica. Mustaine joined Metallica in 1981, and together they gained a following in the underground metal scene of Los Angeles thanks to their demos and their high-energy live performances. After the addition of bassist Cliff Burton, the band moved to San Francisco's Bay Area. Despite their success in the underground scene, the members struggled with substance abuse issues behind the curtain. The worst one happened to be Mustaine, whose addictions resulted in overly aggressive behavior that led to heated confrontations with his fellow band members. Eventually, the rest of the band had enough and kicked Mustaine out of the band. Before recording their debut album Kill 'Em All in New York, Mustaine was put on a bus bound for LA while the rest of Metallica carried on and eventually hired guitarist Kurt Hammett as their new lead guitar player. On the bus ride back to LA, Mustaine came across a pamphlet by Senator Alan Cranston with the statement, The arsenal of Megadeth can't be rid no matter what the peace treaties come to. The term Megadeth stuck and a light bulb for a new song hit Mustaine at that moment. He wrote some lyrics on the back of a cupcake wrapper inspired by the pamphlet and titled the song Megadeth. It was the very first song he wrote after being ejected from Metallica. After arriving in LA, Mustaine swore revenge and quickly formed a new band called Fallen Angels. However, the project wasn't working as expected. Soon, however, Mustaine met bassist Dave Elephison, with whom he formed a close musical relationship. They became bandmates soon and changed the band's name to Megadeth after the song Mustaine wrote. Various musicians came and went during the group's early days, including Slayer guitarist Kerry King who played a few live shows with them. After failing to secure a vocalist, Mustaine decided to handle the vocals himself while playing guitar. Soon Mustaine and Elvison were joined by jazz drummer Gar Samuelson and guitarist Chris Poland. The band signed with Combat Records in 1984. The following year, they released their first studio album, Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good. The album was well received within the underground thrash scene and was recognized for its insane tempos and lightning fast guitar shredding. It included the song Mechanics, a sped up version of a song which was originally written by Mustaine for Metallica. His former band reworked the song and retitled it The Four Horsemen, which appeared in their 1983 debut Kill 'Em All. The album cover also marked the debut of the band's mascot, Vic Rattlehead. Following the success of Killing Is My Business, Megadeth quickly began to work on a follow-up. After signing with Capitol Records, the band released their sophomore effort, Peace Sells But Who's Buying, in 1986. The album surpassed its predecessor in terms of success and influence and brought Megadeth widespread attention. The album is considered one of the most influential records in thrash and extreme metal in general. It's also the first Megadeth album to include politically conscious lyrics, which the band would later be known for. The band embarked on another supporting tour for the album, which saw them perform in the UK for the first time. But as the tour went on, Chris and Gar's substance abuse issues got progressively out of hand, and like Mustaine and Metallica, were spelling problems for the band. The band brought in Chris Beller to fill in for Gar as Mustaine and Elephison were concerned that their drummer wouldn't be able to perform. After the tour, Chris and Gar were fired. Beller became the group's permanent drummer for the next album, while Jeff Young took on guitar duties. Their third studio record, So Far So Good So What, included the song Set the World Afire, 
a retitled and reworked version of Megadeth, the song Mustaine wrote while on the bus back to LA in 83. It also included the song In My Darkest Hour, which Mustaine wrote in one sitting after hearing of the tragic passing of his former bandmate Cliff Burton in 1986. Cliff died in a bus accident in Sweden while on tour with Metallica. Mustaine knew of Cliff's death from someone else other than Metallica, and recalls being upset over not being informed directly by his former bandmates despite their history. While the record did well, tensions emerged in the band again with new members Beller and Young. Like his predecessor, Beller's substance abuse problems were affecting his band duties, and he was replaced by Nick Menza. Meanwhile, Young was fired because Mustaine suspected he was having an affair with his girlfriend at the time, which Young has denied. Years later, Mustaine clarified that he fired Beller and Young because they refused to have their substance abuse issues treated. In 1989, Mustaine was arrested on a DUI charge in order to go to rehab. He emerged sober for the first time in a decade. With renewed energy, Mustaine continued the search for a new guitarist. After auditioning notable names such as Pantera's Dimebag Daryl, Slash, and teenage Jeff Loomis, the band settled on Marty Friedman. Mustaine, Ellefson, Menza, and Friedman would be Megadeth's most stable lineup since the Peace Cells era. The band proceeded to record its next album, the critically acclaimed Rust and Peace. The album is recognized as a genre-defining work of thrash, with many fans considering it to be at the same level as Peace Cells, or even a notch better. It also got Megadeth their first Grammy nomination for Best Metal Performance. Inspired, or perhaps challenged, by the direction of Metallica for their 1991 self-titled album, Megadeth went for a more simplified musical approach for their next album. The result was Countdown to Extinction, their most successful record to date, featuring one of their most popular songs, Symphony of Destruction. The band went on a worldwide supporting tour. While touring in 1993, Mustaine relapsed into substance abuse and was rushed into the emergency room. He returned to rehab for seven weeks to get cleaned up. Megadeth released its next album in 1994 titled Euthanasia. The album continued the band's departure from its thrash roots and exploration of a more commercial sound. This trend continued throughout the decade, as seen in 1997's Cryptic Writings and 1999's Risk, the latter of which found Megadeth flirting with alternative rock. By the time the band recorded Risk, Mustaine had replaced Nick Menza with Jimmy DeGrasso. Unfortunately, Risk performed poorly and fans criticized it from straying too far from Megadeth's sound. But that wasn't the only thing Megadeth had to deal with in 1999. That July, their former drummer Gar Samuelson passed away from liver failure. The band dedicated its performance at Woodstock 99 to his memory. In December, Marty Friedman announced that he was leaving the band, citing creative differences with the rest of the band. He was replaced in January 2000 by Al Petrelli. Megadeth attempted a return to a heavier sound with their 2001 release, The World Needs a Hero. But the effort fell short of expectations and received mixed reviews. Mustaine also went through a significant moment that year when he sat down with Lars Ulrich for the first time in nearly 20 years to address their years-long animosity. The meeting was included in Metallica's 2003 documentary Some Kind of Monster, which chronicles the band dealing with their internal issues and the making of their album St. Anger. In January 2002, Mustaine injured his left arm, severely limiting his guitar playing. He was diagnosed with radial neuropathy, which meant he could not grab anything with his left hand. Due to this injury, Mustaine announced the end of Megadeth in April 2002. Following Megadeth's breakup, Mustaine underwent months of physical therapy to regain the use of his left arm. While recovering, Mustaine's life did a 360 as he became a born-again Christian. He continues to practice the faith to this day. Mustaine also oversaw the remixing and re-release of Megadeth's albums under Capitol Records, from their debut to Risk. As Mustaine recovered, he slowly regained his ability to play guitar again. He began writing music for a solo album with session musicians, including former bandmate Chris Poland. Eventually, the project was branded under the Megadeth name. The resulting album, The System Has Failed, was released in 2004. Fans and critics considered it a return to the band's thrash roots. Megadeth embarked on a tour to support the album. Originally, Mustaine intended it to be the band's final album and tour, after which he'll continue as a solo act. However, the band's successful resurgence during this period changed his mind. 
Since the system has failed was recorded with session musicians, Mustaine hired new permanent members, James Lomenzo on bass and brothers Glenn and Sean Drover on guitars and drums respectively. Megadeth proceeded to record their next album, 2007's United Abominations. The record continued the band's re-exploration of its thrash roots and included an updated version of their 1995 hit single, A Tout Le Monde. The following year, Glenn Drover exited the band. Former Nevermore guitarist Chris Broderick took his place and debuted on the band's 2009 album, Endgame. In early 2010, drummer Sean Drover reconnected former bassist Dave Ellefson with Mustaine after Megadeth's current bassist James Lomenzo announced he'd be leaving the band. Ellefson was invited to a rehearsal and rejoined the band afterward after eight years. Around the same time Ellefson rejoined, Mustaine reconciled with his former bandmates in Metallica, finally ending one of the longest rivalries in the metal scene. Megadeth joined Metallica and the rest of their big four colleagues, Slayer and Anthrax, for the Sonosphere Festival. This marked the first time the big four of thrash metal performed together on the same bill. The following year, Mustaine joined Metallica on stage for their 30th anniversary and played a few songs from Kill 'Em All, which he co-wrote with the band. Megadeth released their 13th studio album, aptly titled 13, in 2011. It was the first time Ellefson played on a Megadeth record since The World Needs a Hero in 2001. The band followed it up with 2013 Super Collider where they experimented again with a more accessible sound. The following year saw another round of lineup changes for the band as both Sean Drover and Chris Broderick left the band due to creative differences. Mustaine tried to get that lineup together, but talks fell through. He hired guitarist Kiko Larero from Angra and drummer Chris Adler from Lamb of God to record Megadeth's next album. Dystopia was released in 2016 and saw the band again return to its signature thrash sound. The album's title track won Megadeth their first ever Grammy Award. Sadly, 2016 saw the band face another loss. Their former drummer Nick Menza from the beloved Rust in Peace lineup died of congestive heart failure while performing on stage with his then band OHM. Adler left shortly after the release of Dystopia due to scheduling conflicts with Lamb of God and was replaced by Dirk Verberen. The band returned to the studio in May 2019 to record its next album. However, the following month, Mustaine announced that he had throat cancer, forcing Megadeth to cancel all its tour dates that year. Nonetheless, the band continued working on the album while Mustaine battled his illness. In January, he announced his victory over cancer. The new album went through numerous delays, one of which was the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. In 2021, Ellefson was fired due to sexually explicit videos involving him leaking out on Twitter. His recorded bass parts were removed from the album and re-recorded by bassist Steve DiGiorgio, although he didn't stick as a permanent member. In May 2022, Megadeth announced the return of James Lomenzo as their bassist. The album titled The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead was finally released in September of that year and received widespread praise. If their latest album proves anything, it's that Megadeth are still at the top of the game, almost 40 years after starting out and after going through numerous lineup changes, controversies, and losses. Only a few bands last this long with the same energy, aggression, and proficiency. And Megadeth belong to that rare breed of bands in metal that not only last, but remain vital and influential after all these years.